Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, we're looking at why people eat whale poop. Just before we get started, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by Audible. Whether you want to get healthier, get motivated, or learn something new, audiobooks from Audible are an amazing way to do just that. Start a 30-day trial with your first audiobook for free. Go to audible.com slash brainfood or text brainfood, one word, to 500-500. Some refer to the rock-like substance as floating gold because of its hue and value. For reference, a 175 pound or 79 kilogram of the stuff was found floating off the coast of Amman, netting the fishermen who found it a cool $3 million when they sold it at auction. Others call it ambergris, derived from the old French ambergris, meaning grey amber. But perhaps the most accurate way to describe the prized, rare, hard, lumpy substance found floating in oceans and washed up on beaches worldwide is excrement. Well, excrement, to be exact here. Ambergris is a strong-smelling, waxy-feeling whale emission that's been used for centuries by humans in perfumes, medicines, foods, and apparently now cocktails. For much of human history, it was a complete mystery as to where this substance came from. That all changed, though, in 1724, when Boston physician Zabdiel Boylston, who was also the first to introduce the practice of inoculation in the American colonies, at great personal risk to himself in doing so in that case, revealed in the scientific publication Philosophical Transactions that ambergris came from sperm whales. He primarily supported his assertion by noting an account of a whaler who claimed he found 25 pounds of it in the gut of a whale when he killed it. Given ambergris will invariably have squid beaks embedded in it, it was presumably easy enough to put two and two together. On that note, while it's often claims that where exactly ambergris came from is a much more modern discovery, let alone what part of the whale it came from, even for those who fail to note the obscure reference by Boston, we can't fathom how they missed Herman Melville in the mid-19th century devoting a full chapter of Moby Dick to it. In it, he explicitly noted where it came from and gave interesting insight into its use at the time. Now, this ambergris is a very curious substance, and so important as an article of commerce that in 1791, a certain Nantucket-born Captain Coffin was examined at the bar of the English House of Commons on that subject. For at that time, and indeed until a comparatively late day, the precise origin of ambergris remained, like amber itself, a problem to the learned. Ambergris is soft, waxy, and so highly fragrant and spicy that it is largely used in perfumery, in pastels, precious candles, hair powders, and pomatum. The Turks use it in cooking and also carry it to Mecca for the same purpose that frankincense is carried to St. Peter's in Rome. Some wine merchants drop a few grains into claret to flavor it. Who would think then that such fine ladies and gentlemen should regale themselves with an essence found in the inglorious bowels of a sick whale? Yet, so it is. By some, ambergris is supposed to be the cause, and by others the effect, of the dyspepsia in the whale. I have forgotten to say there were found in this ambergris certain hard, round, bony plates which at first Stubb thought might be sailors' trousers buttons, but it afterwards turned out that they were nothing more than pieces of small squid bones embalmed in that manner. Despite this very prominent reference among others, ambergris is still today often mistakenly referred to as whale vomit. But as previously noted, it is actually closer to whale poop. So the question now probably in your mind is, well, how is this ambergris made within the whale? In a nutshell, ambergris is produced when a sperm whale has an upset stomach, as Melville very astutely noted. While sperm whales eat things like crab, octopus, fish, and small bottom swimming sharks, they absolutely love squid. Normally, the hard beaks of the squids are vomited back up by the whale, but occasionally the beaks sometimes pass through into the intestines. Christopher Kemp, a molecular biologist and author of Floating Gold, A Natural and Unnatural History of Ambergris, notes, Curved like a parrot's beak, the squid's indigestible beaks pass from the stomach, chafing and irritating the delicate intestinal lining on the way. As a growing mass, they are pushed farther along the intestines and become a tangled, indigestible solid, saturated with feces, which begins to obstruct the rectum. It also acts as a dam. Feces build up behind it. The whale's gastrointestinal system responds by increasing water absorption from the lower intestines, and gradually the feces saturating the compacted mass of squid beaks becomes 
atoms like cement, binding the slurry together permanently. It becomes a concentration, a smooth and striated boulder. At the same time, a fatty bile-like substance is secreted inside of the intestine that ultimately surrounds the sharp beaks and more or less blunts their points, as well as helps the mass slide its way through the whale. In the end, literally, the substance mixes with partially digested mass as described and is eventually excreted. When it's first expelled into the water, ambergris is pretty much as you'd expect. It's dark-colored, viscous, and smells like fecal matter. But microbes, the sun, air, and salt water work their magic on the mass while waves slowly degrade it. Eventually, it becomes gray and waxy, but still retains the chunks of squid beak as previously noted. It also stops smelling like poop once it has aged enough. People have variously described the aged smell of ambergris as earthy, piney, and tobacco-like. And while it may seem strange, long before Melville's account, humans have been sniffing, eating, and rubbing this whale excrement on their skin, with the ancient Egyptians known to have used it as incense, the Chinese among others using it as an aphrodisiac, and many throughout history using it for various medicinal purposes, including the Persians using it as a medicine to cure heart problems. King Henry V from 1386 to 1422 and King Charles II from 1630 to 1685 often included it in their decadent meals. In fact, King Charles's favorite meal was supposedly eggs and ambergris. So unlike those who consumed it for supposed medicinal purposes, it would appear that some, like this royal pair, simply enjoyed the taste of it. As for what eating eggs and ambergris is like, King Charles II's affinity for it spurred the aforementioned author Christopher Kemp to try the whale excrement with an egg-based recipe in the 1685 cookbook The Accomplished Cook by Robert May. Kemp reported, it crumbles like truffle. I fold it carefully into the eggs with a fork, rising and mingling with curl of steam from the eggs, the familiar odor of ambergris begins to fill and clog my throat, a thick and unmistakable smell that I can taste. It inhabits the back of my throat and fills my sinuses. It is aromatic, both woody and floral. The smell reminds me of leaf litter on a forest floor and of the delicate, frilly undersides of mushrooms that grow in damp and shaded places. Although present in only very small amounts, the cholesterol-rich ambergris coats my tongue and the inside of my mouth with a greasy film. I try to rinse it away by drinking water and eating dry slices of bread, but it remains for an hour or longer. All right, so let's jump forward now to more modern times. Ambergris was actually all the rage in various perfumes in the 20th century, with it not only lending its scent to the products, but also reportedly helping the perfume adhere to the skin thanks to its slightly waxy nature. Of course, due to the extreme rarity of the substance, most perfume makers have since long switched to alternative substances to try and achieve the same scent and properties, including using synthetic ambergris, with the first of those developed in the mid-20th century by Swiss chemist Max Attle. One ambergris dealer, Frenchman Bernard Perrin, however, notes that some perfume companies still occasionally purchase it for use in some of their more exclusive lines. So for those who have the money and want to indulge in the ultimate decadence of eating or rubbing bits of aged whale excrement on their bodies, ambergris is still available thanks to the tireless effort of ambergris hunters the world over, who are no doubt just a phone call away from getting their own History Channel show. Yes, while stories do pop up now and then seeming to indicate it's always a random happy accident when individuals find their lotto ticket of ambergris washed up on a beach, it usually isn't. There's a whole network of sometimes very organized ambergris searchers looking to cash in. According to Kemp, there are even groups of very dedicated people who engage in sometimes violent turf wars in hopes of finding a chunk of the stuff. Kemp said in an interview with Atlas Obscura, these people have their own language and taxonomies, and I love the idea that they're out there trying to find this strange stuff which, after all, was shit out by a whale and then weathered for years by the elements. And now for a bonus fact. Today, there seems to be a lot of ambiguity in terms of the legality of ambergris in certain parts of the world. Australia has outright banned it being used in products, while in the United States, laws are less definitive. Most officials consider it to be illegal under the 1973 Endangered Species Act, but little is usually done to attempt to prosecute anyone who purchases or sells it or any products that include it. This is because it isn't clear whether said act includes protecting the whale's waste. After all, collecting a portion of the waste potentially many months after the whale has secreted it does no harm to the whale in question, and the market for it actually encourages the protection of the whales, as the more sperm whales there are, the more ambergris will be available to find its way to beaches the world over. That said, as previously mentioned, it was once a common practice for whalers to harvest the ambergris from a recently killed whale if it was present. 
The potential that a given entity may have acquired the ambergris through such a method is perhaps why many governments aren't keen on making it explicitly legal. But given the fact it's far more likely the ambergris was found on the beach or the like, and this form is actually preferred given that high-quality ambergris needs to be aged in the ocean, many of these same legal entities usually look the other way when it comes to people trading in ambergris or products that include it. So I really hope you enjoyed that video, and before you go, just let me tell you a little bit about Audible. Audiobooks are great for helping you to become a better you. You can feel healthier, get motivated. In that regard, I'd actually like to recommend a specific book that I found super inspirational. The book's called Total Recall. You might have heard of it. It's by Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it is genuinely one of the best books that I've ever listened to on Audible. I've listened to it multiple times. It's super long. It's just one of those books you can keep going back to. So once you've got a book from Audible, and again, do yourself a favor and grab Total Recall. Audible lets you seamlessly switch devices, so you can be listening on your phone, and then you can switch to your tablet, or even your Amazon Echo or car. Your finished books quickly, while being able to do many other things, maybe you've got a long commute, chores around the house, all sorts of things. So sign up to Audible today, and you get credit for a month to spend on any audiobook, regardless of price. And if you don't like a book that you choose, you can always exchange it with no questions asked and if you don't use your credit, it will just roll over to the next month. But you are going to find loads of stuff you like, as Audible has an unmatched selection of audiobooks, audio shows, comedy, and more. Also, this is not a rental service. Your books, once you've got them, are yours to keep. As I mentioned with Total Recall, you can go back anytime you want and listen again. You can start your 30-day trial and get your first audiobook for free. Just go to audible.com slash brainfood, or you can text brainfood, one word, to 500-500. And also do remember that doing that helps support the show, so thank you to Audible for sponsoring, and thank you for watching.